folks, let's go over here to the Ord Oracle.com. That is Ord hyphen Oracle. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we have Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle come on the Tom O'Brien show, and he goes through uh, a few charts, mainly talking about the market and sometimes gold as well. Tim, we are happy to have you on again. How are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me on again. Absolutely. So, uh, let's get right to the charts. Actually, we didn't really go over gold last uh, yeah. last time I was on. So actually, we kind of we'll take a look at the bigger picture and work it all the way down to where we are on a short term basis. And uh, so, chart number one. Seen this before, but it's just kind of a repeat. But it kind of you know uh, refreshes the mind, I guess you might say. But the first chart is a monthly uh, GDX, so you, you look at the bigger picture, and the bottom window is a GDX up-down volume um, uh, indicator, and anyhow, we use the Bollinger Band as a trigger, and once it gets above the mid-Bollinger Band, momentum has turned up on the up-down volume, and that's usually a, a, a consistent buy signal. Next window up is uh, the... Uh, monthly advanced decline with a Bollinger Band, and again, the bicycles, when it closes above the mid-Bollinger Band's bicycle, those indicators were triggered on May 31st, and as you can see, both indicators are still making higher highs. Actually, they're pretty much just making higher highs. Uh, it's pretty much gone straight up since uh, uh, end of May, 1st of June. And so that's, that's usually a good signal. A lot of these advanced declines and actually up-down volume, once they start in a trend, they usually continue in that trend. So signals in the past of this type have lasted a minimum of about a year and a half. So the, the trigger was uh, triggered on May 31st, so you add a year and a half to that, you come out with, um, what, November? Somewhere, yeah, November of 2025. So let's go with chart two. This looks at the weekly chart, same indicator, but on the weekly chart, same trigger. Once both indicators close above mid Bollinger Band, which they have, that did it on March 18th. And those signals also last about a year and a half, not longer. Some has uh, lasted up four years. But again, momentum's the key. Uh, the weekly charts are on a buy signal since March 18th. And um, they also like a year and a half, well, a year and a half from March 18th takes in about September of 18th, 2025. So this impulse wave should last a while. So it's, it's good down to, to a little bit shorter term. Uh, this is uh, chart three. Perfect. And the bottom window seems to work the best. And it's the 50-day uh, average of the up-down volume. Advanced climb works works not as quite as well. So I take the signals off the up-down volume over. I went back and and tested this. And once, uh, the up-down volume, for some reason, just works better than advanced decline. But anyhow, the bottom window is the uh, up-down volume percent with the 50-day average. And as long as this indicator stays above zero, we're coming in around plus 11 right now, uh, the uptrend is still intact. When it falls below zero, is when usually you get uh, corrections that can last several weeks, if not several months. And all that kind of a green area across the charts are when those, when this indicator was above um, zero. And it got triggered, looks like about mid March, uh, and it still remains on a bicycle, even though since mid March they had kind of uh, several different minor consolidations, but. In general, the internals are actually stronger, or strong, what that anticipates. Oops, I hear the music. Yeah, Tim, stay right there. We also have a question uh, from a viewer when you get back. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle in just a moment. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are joined uh, by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, Tim, before we went to the break, we were on chart three, but uh, we had a question uh, on the okay. YouTube uh, chat. It was regarding chart one, the GDX advanced decline. What I'm assuming right. is asking regarding the price. But if you're seeing a movement above that upper Bollinger Band, does that usually indicate a, a movement back down near the mid? Or do you see any kind of trend reversal, or could it just stay up in that area, you know, indefinitely and in, in form basically new uh, range with the Bollinger Band? So, 
uh, which bullet? Okay, so we're charging. Yeah, I'm one. assuming he's asking what indicator, or is he talking about GDX, or is he talking about one of the uh, up down volume advanced decline indicators? I'm assuming he's asking price. I'm going to wait for him to say something in the den there. Um, well, there's actually the market is mo momentum's really the the uh, powerhouse, I guess you might say. Momentum rules all indicators. I'll put it that way. If the momentum's up, then uh, in general, the stock market market is going to move higher. If you want to make life easy for you, take a Bollinger Band, put it on the weekly chart and the monthly chart, as long as that stock or index or whatever stays above the mid Bollinger Band, the trend's up, period. Once it falls below the mid Bollinger Band, then everything changes. And it also works you know, this, uh, I guess, continuity also works with advanced decline and also works with up-down volume. So once momentum starts going in a direction, it usually stays in that direction. It's kind of like kinetic energy. It's kind of like uh, right. physics. So it works the same way. So if markets, it's not random. It, it just works off of momentum. So if he's talking about uh, the GDX price, which right now is above the mid-Bollinger band, uh, I favor... If he's talking about that, if, it mid, if the GDX falls below the mid Bollinger Band, does that create a sell signal? It does weaken the uptrend, but I really key off of the up down volume advanced client uh, indicator uh, indicators. As long as that those two indicators stay above the mid Bollinger Band, whether GDX above or below mo, mo, uh, above or below mid Bollinger Band, it's really the momentum of the advanced decline and how much up volume there is compared to down volume. That's really the force of the market, even though price may fall back because on GDX, you know, it's an index of stocks. It could fall back because of one stock in that index, but as long as momentum and of price and up, uh, price and volume is going up, the index will eventually go back up. Now, if it, if it moves above in the up-down volume, ab above the upper Bollinger Band, does that signal that it's kind of losing steam a little bit? Like if you look at it as like a system in that way, um, or could it indefinitely stay in that period and again just kind of redraw? And that's on the up-down volume. Up-down volume, okay. Uh, uh, on chart one, we're looking at yeah. the monthly, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, yes. As long as that stays above the mid Bollinger Band, the uptrend's intact. Okay. So perfect. Uh, all right. All right. Awesome so deal. So, so we can go back to chart three. Yes, I have it up right now. All right. So anyhow, the fifty-day average is kind of a, a little bit, uh, which is the up-down volume again. I think that's this indicator is more accurate, I guess you might say, than an advanced decline indicator. But as long as it stays above zero, the short-term trend is up, even though it, it did pull back here a little bit. Uh, there's nothing, and actually over the last several days, it's been getting stronger as this indicator is going up. But let's look at the short term, which is on page four. And oh, uh, this is uh, a really good indicator Again, I'm using up-down volume and advanced client indicators, and these are accumulative. Uh, the top window is the GDX. It's just straight GDX daily. Next window down is the cumulative up-down volume, and below that is advanced decline volume, or advanced decline uh, equities, I guess you might say. So what I want to point out, if you notice, over the last uh, month, GDX has made lower lows, and lower highs, so I got circled in red there. You can see that. And uh, but uh, the up down volume, second window down, is is it pretty much masked its low. It didn't really break a new low, but also on this rally, we have broke to new highs where GDX has not yet broke to new highs above the previous high. So this is a positive divergence both uh, on a previous down or the previous. Even though GDX made lower lows, this indicator pretty much just matches lows. And now we're in a rally mode, and this indicator has already broke above the previous high. And it's actually tech attacking, if not matching, the previous high back in uh, mid-July. So what that tells me, GDX at a minimum should get back to its previous highs, if not keep going. We'll have to wait and see how this works out. But I uh, did previous examples, if you go back to December of 2023, the top window is the GDX. If you notice the next window down, GDX made higher highs. This indicator made lower highs, showing up-down volume was weakening. 
and back in uh, June of this year, uh, GDX was kind of consolidating down, and both those indicators were actually just going sideways, mm. uh, showing there was strength in the market. So um, this uh, current rally, even though you have some consolidations, the bigger trend remains uh, bullish. And on a short-term basis, we should probably break above the high we had in July. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's something I'm watching for. So um, let's go to chart five. Absolutely. All right, I have and chart uh, five. Is, oh, yep. Yeah, this is, this is another indicator. This is the, um, I think it's the daily chart. But anyhow, the middle window is a silver-gold ratio. And I use the ETFs instead of the silver-gold period because uh, you have to wait on the close to get that. But anyhow, so, but SLV and GLD, uh, they're currently updated all the time. And usually when this ratio gets uh, really plummeted, I guess you might say, the RSI will fall down below around 30. And I marked all the times. I used to, uh, I used 12, and 12 didn't work out as good. So I switched it back to 18, did a, a back study on it. And the 18 period RSI seems to work really well. So every time the RSI gets down below 30 on an 18 RSI, you're usually at, at a minimum of a short-term low. And actually yesterday we hit below, the RSI hit below 30, uh, even though the market's up a little bit. It hit, hit it twice, once on August 5th and uh, yesterday again. So this is also adds, uh, I guess, um, bullish situations because uh, sometimes they can pick out significant lows, which it did back in the COVID crash. It picked out that low, then that low before it. And it looks like about May of 2019, it picked out that low. And uh, uh, so, anyhow, yeah, I was picking out lows. So this is another bullish short-term picture here. Fantastic. Yeah, Tim, stay right there. Uh, folks, we'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle in just a moment. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. He's on uh, every Tuesday and Thursday for the Tom O'Brien Show. Uh, before we get back to Tim, I want to show you guys over here at TFNN.com. Uh, you can go over to the Services tab, and we have two fantastic webinars uh, from Tim Ord. That is the Secret Science of Market Tops with Tim Ord and Six Secret Ratios Every Trader Should Know. Uh, he's been in the market for quite a long time, and if you are uh, really trying to dig in to understand what he's saying and, and just kind of expand your arsenal regarding trading, I would strongly recommend uh, checking these out. Uh, they're really fantastic. All right, so Tim, before we went to the break, we were talking about uh, the silver over the gold there, um, talking about the RSI. I didn't know if you had any other thoughts you wanted to clear up on that before we moved on into the SPX. No, it seems like uh, we're, we're due for... A kind of a break out of the sideways consolidation, probably get a rally going here. And, uh, you know, the monthly, the weeklies, the monthlies and the weeklies are on a buy signal. The dailies are, flip, are flipping bullish. Actually, they actually flipped bullish on August 5th. And this is another one kind of a, with the RSI getting down there below 30 twice on the gold silver ratio. Uh, it's probably going to start another impulse wave here. So it looks bullish for. Uh, the gold stocks, I guess you might say. So that's that. So let's go to let's go to chart six. Perfect. We're gonna we're gonna flip to the equity market. Yeah. And uh, uh, this is I've, I've kind of been bullish all year, and um, even though we we may see a trading range here develop, but this is kind of a, a good indicator uh, to determine if you're in a bull or bear market. This indicator only gets triggered in bull markets. So once this, this is triggered, you know the, the the bull market or the new highs are still coming. And this indicator is is called the Zwag Breath Thrust Indicator. I call it ZBT for short because Zwag Breath Thrust Indicator is a mouthful. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, I got some red lines and uh, blue lines on this chart, and that's when this indicator has been triggered and to trigger this indicator it's what it does it's uh, advancing issues over total issues and you take that 10-day average and when it gets below to start the indicator uh to trigger the indicator there's two parts to it it needs to get uh, to 0.4 or lower or on august 5th we hit 
point four. So okay, uh, it's now it's triggered. Will it actually complete its trigger? And to do that, it has to go to point six in ten business days, which is uh, August nineteenth, uh, uh, this coming Monday. And so uh, when I did this chart today, it's point five nine. So we're just a, a breath of way of point five nine, and still. Uh, this is updated on uh, today's close, so it would be today's close, tomorrow's close, and Monday's close. So if the market holds steady, if not move higher, uh, over the next three days, chances are this indicator will get triggered. And and that's not necessarily picks the exact bottom. It just tells you the future of, of, of a bull market. Sometimes it comes exactly bottom, sometimes it builds a base. But the worst-case scenario, it, it builds a base. It really... The, the downtrend we had going to August 5th, in other words, is over. The worst case scenario now, if this, tri- if this indicator triggers, is just a test of the August 5th low. That would be the worst case scenario. The best uh, case scenario is for this rally just to continue, which is common. If you notice the last two times, it did just that. It got to 0.5 and went up, or 0.4, went up to 0.6, the market just kept on chugging. Uh, I don't think we're going to do it this time. I think we're going to hit point six. You know, could do it tonight's close. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but if not, it's probably a good chance we'll do it tomorrow because the market's got quite a bit of momentum here. But if it does trigger, which I think it will, uh, that suggests we haven't seen the final highs in this market. So that's what this indicator is good for. So it kind of this indicator only gets triggered again in bull markets. It doesn't show up in bear markets. I see. So. Uh, um, so anyhow, so chances are, so there's nothing being bearish here in the market. Um, this rally is getting kind of fast. So let's, let's kind of look at where it may go. Yeah. I have chart seven up right okay. now. Yeah. Okay. This is a short term view. Uh, on your show, I thought we'd, we'd find support in that uh, green I shaded, the kind of light green area going back to mid May there. Because uh, we had a lot of panic in that region, according to the trend close. I thought we may bottom in that area. Well, the market did shoot through that area a little bit on on August uh, 5th. It hit, hit right below it, then went right back into it. But uh, that's a big, big support area. And, and I did list the trend closes, recent trend closes uh, on this decline. I haven't really listed on the advance yet. But I thought we may get back to, I got a, uh, today's price is up against or close to it, the high of around 555, which is basically uh, the August 1st or end of July there, that high. Either market's going to stop there, pull back a little bit. If not, we may just push through that high and go up to the gap, the gap off the July high, uh, which is around 560. So we're not uh, too far away from price, some sort of a, a high here. If you look at the bottom window, I kind of use this. If, the, if this indicator just keeps going up then and hitting new highs along with the S&Ps, that's easy. The market will continue higher. So we had a, uh, over the last couple of days, even today so far, this indicator is hitting higher highs as, as well as the S&Ps. That tells me probably the market is going to uh, – keep going higher. Normally, you'll get a divergence where the SPs hit a higher high and the SPX ratio will make a lower high. We had one here uh, basically, uh, looks like about the 12th of August there. We kind of hesitated there, and so I was kind of watching if we were going to make a higher high. It turns out the next day we did, and we kept going. And so far, it remains bullish, so probably we're at least going to touch the... Uh, in, or, uh, late July, early August high and find a little bit of resistance and we may push through that and get up to 560. But it also, as of uh, yes, no, today, as you one, two, three, four, five, yeah, today, today marks six days up in a row. Yeah. Six days up in a row predict the market will be higher 83% of the time within five days or five days. As a matter of fact, it's starting to take six days now. But it's around five days. So we haven't seen, even though we may see resistance at the July up around 555 on the SPY, I don't think it will be the final high. 
is we may consolidate a little bit and probably, uh, if not uh, next week, the week after, we may blow through and get up to the gap high. So there's lots of stuff to, to watch how momentum works. But uh, uh, since up six days, you don't really want to bet against that being a, a top of any consequence because 83% of the time, the market will see a higher high. So momentum's up. Uh, Interesting. VIX is making lower lows, and the, uh, the market's making higher highs. So let momentum run out, and uh, don't guess where the next high will be. It, the market will tell you the VIX will show up or something. Right. And there'll be some other indicators that'll tell you, yeah, you're, you're probably running out of steam to the upside. So far, that has not happened. Awesome. Well, Tim, thank you so much. That was uh, very insightful. We love having you on here. I uh, hope you take care. We'll see you next Tuesday, okay? All right. Sounds good. All right, Thank folks, you. that was just Tim Moore of the Orator Oracle. We'll be right back for a short break.